Okay, today I want to talk about a little project that I've been working on here in the last couple of days. Um, what it came from was I was looking for a simple, inexpensive way to make an oscillator that's 455 kilohertz, which is most of the time the uh, the IF frequency of most old AM radios. So this would be for like the beginner who wants to work on AM radio alignment and needs to have an IF signal generator but doesn't really have a signal generator or can't afford one or just somebody who wants to experiment and build something. So I looked around at a lot of different things and it wasn't really appealing to you know the winding coils and everything. I've done that. Um, but that can be tedious sometimes, especially the lower the frequency you go, uh, usually the bigger your coils are going to get. So when you're down at 455 kilohertz, some of those coils can get pretty big. But anyhow, I came across this little circuit called a Pierce Gate Crystal Oscillator. Now, one thing I did have was a whole bag full of these little uh, 455 kilohertz crystal oscillators, just little crystals. So I thought, well heck, I could use one of those. And uh, just so you know, you can pick those little oscillators, those little crystals up on eBay for cheap. I mean, you, that whole bag there was, I think there was a hundred of them there, cost maybe five dollars, seven dollars. And you can buy, you know, quantity ten for like a dollar with free shipping sometimes if you really shop around. So this is appealing because it's inexpensive. Um, it uses a very common, that you can probably buy at Radio Shack, um, hex inverter chip. Uh, I'm using a CD4049. It's a 40 series integrated circuit. Very obtainable, very forgiving chip. And basically the way this thing works is, what we're doing here is, this is just an inverter. So if you have a high going in here you have a low coming out here and vice versa okay so it's really a logic gate it's not really designed as a uh, oscillator or anything like that it's just a logic gate and just so happens that these logic gates can shift at pretty high frequencies you know within reason so you can get clear up into maybe even close to the VHF bands possibly but you can definitely get into HF bands uh, with these chips so basically all we're doing is we're taking one of these chips and we're putting base we're creating basically a, a pi a pi network filter okay with the two capacitors and the crystal oscillator then we have to have a little um isolation resistor okay that kind of gives a little bit of isolation and protection between the output of the inverter and the oscillations of this crystal here especially like if you if you don't have that at certain frequencies you can get some strange harmonics and things like that um, you can experiment with it the way you determine this is based upon the frequency of the circuit so basically I think this is going to look pretty familiar but your resistor here is going to be 1 over 2 pi f c2 which is this here this capacitor okay so i think we've uh, seen the reactance formulas before anybody that's messed around with electronics but that's basically all this is we're just calculating that out and we're just taking 1 over 2 pi times the 455 kilohertz times 100 picofarads and when you calculate out all the zeros and all that thing it's going to be just a little bit over 300 ohms. It comes out around 300 and I think 308 ohms or so. So I used the closest resistor I had, which was 330 ohms, and that's how I came up with that. Okay, this resistor up here is a feedback resistor. Okay, and it's I set it to 10 mega 10 mega ohms. It's not really highly critical, but just so you know, usually the higher the frequency or the lower the frequency of the oscillator, the higher this is going to be. So when you're at the low frequencies like this, you're going to be up around 10, 10 mega ohms or so. Okay, And that can drop down to 470K or so when you get up 
you know, 50 megahertz and high frequencies like that. This also buffers the output a little bit and kind of protects your output load from this whole oscillator circuit. So if you notice, we have another, and that, that also aids in the oscillation. So basically what's happening here is by putting this Pi filter and this feedback resistor across this little inverter, we're creating a 180 degrees phase shift because of the inverter. Then the negative gain that's set up from this feedback resistor creates basically a positive feedback, which sets this whole mess here into oscillation. Okay, And basically if these don't end up, if the capacitive reactants of this don't end up loading this down funny, um, if they match the capac internal capacitance of the crystal and so forth, this whole circuit will oscillate at approximately the f resonant frequency of the crystal. Now this is what you have to experiment with a little bit. Um, the higher the frequency the crystal, the lower the, er, the, lower the capacitance is going to be on these. So, you know, if you were up in the megahertz, these would be, you know, half of that. They'd be, you know, anywhere from 20 to 50 picofarads or, you know, lower maybe. But uh, after experimenting, this seemed to be the sweet spot for this particular crystal. Again, it depends on what kind of crystal, okay? C1 and C2 for stable, you adjust them till you get a stable frequency. If these go up too high, this is going to get loaded down a little bit. It's going to slow down and you're not going to quite get your 455 or your resonant frequency or your you know advertised resonant frequency of your crystal so that's pretty much what you want to ensure you don't want to go too low but you don't want to go too high and you have to experiment a little bit and I, I, I started out with 200 pf and the 200 actually loaded it down and I was only getting about 453 kilohertz instead of 455 once I got these down to here that seemed to stabilize it. I go much lower than that, it starts to get a little bit unstable. So that's the sweet spot. Now, one of the caveats with this circuit is these are digital circuits. They're inverters. They're designed for logic. So the output is not going to be a sine wave. It's going to be a square wave. Okay. So basically, you're going to get a square wave at the frequency of this Pi circuit, which is going to be 455 kilohertz. Now, with radio, that doesn't matter because really RF doesn't really care the shape of the waveform. As a matter of fact, on purpose, a lot of the old tube type signal generators create a dirty sine wave, a sine wave that has other distortion characteristics to it. And the reason they do that is they want to create harmonics so that you actually can create RF signals at a harmonic much higher than the signal generator is naturally capable of producing. So one of the downsides of this is you probably are going to get harmonics. Um, you can put some filters on here and do some things to change that, but for what we're doing, we're, we're talking an All-American 5 AM tube radio and you're tuning a 455 kilohertz IF uh, coil, we don't really worry about those things. Um, the old signal generators had harmonics. This will have harmonics. It's not going to make a difference. Your fundamental frequency is going to be 455. So basically what I did was uh, after doing some breadboarding, this is the little circuit I came up with right here. So if you look, see if it focuses. All right. So basically, here's your here's your toilet, your volt power supply going in. Here's your two little capacitors and your crystal that forms your little circuit there, your little Pi network. I did put this crystal on a on a little IC socket so I can change it out if I ever want to. And there's your CD4049 and there's your two resistors okay so you have your feedback resistor right here and you have your little isolation resistor down here and basically 
that's it simple circuit very simple very easy to build I just kind of hacked it to bodged it together here on the bottom and it works pretty well now let's turn it on and see what it does so we'll take this here just put a couple wires here so we can measure the signal turn on the power supply and I'm only running this at 3 volts right now okay so I'm only putting a little 3 volt signal uh, it works perfect at that and the crystal everything runs nice and cool uh, these crystals are very delicate so if you overload things you can damage them so I'm going to put my scope on there and let's see what we get if we get something okay so let's move on over to the scope bring it up and as you can see we have a nice little square wave here, although we have a bunch of noise at the peaks. Now, one of the things I did notice is that that, that noise is on there. Now, when I did this up on a breadboard and I experimented with it, the breadboard was a perfect square wave. There was a, a tiny little ringing at the, at the very le you know leading edge of the, of the waveform, but it was pretty much square. When I soldered it up on this board, for some reason, I'm picking up some sort of high-frequency oscillation. Uh, I played around with some of the component values. I played around with component location. Never was really able to get rid of it. And it really doesn't, again, doesn't seem to affect anything. Um, seems to be working fine. So, with that in mind, let's see what it does to a radio. Um, Come back down here. Okay. Bring this up a little bit. And I have my trusty old uh, Panasonic RF800. This is one of the best little transistor radios ever made. I love it. Um, very reliable. Very sensitive. Very selective. Um, if you want to get into, you know, uh, DXing with little portable transistor radios, this is a great start right here good antenna in it and so forth. So let's turn this thing on and we hear some noise here and let's turn on our oscillator and as you can see it blocks it right out. If I turn it back off you can hear it. On, off. On, off. Okay. So, I got to thinking, that's great, To but it's really hard to tune in a uh, an IF without some sort of modulation. So I wonder, what could I do that's cheap and easy, uh, to add modulation. I didn't want to build another oscillator. I didn't want to deal with all that. I didn't want to try to modulate this signal in any way. So I came up with a pretty elegant simple solution. Um, yours doesn't have to be this fancy but I had this coil laying around that I made. Basically just a little piece of PVC pipe and in my case I took it to my lathe and I just carved out the middle of this to make it very very thin okay so the the thinner the thinner the form the you know the better it is for the Q of the coil and so forth so I made this very thin and then I just wound a whole bunch of uh, I actually figured this out I think this was designed for 455 kilohertz but I just wound a bunch of windings on here I put a capacitor here there's a tap also for something else but I don't use that so one end I put a capacitor other end bare wire and 
I just take it and drop the screwdriver on the floor, pick it back up. So we're going to put this in the output. And now, hopefully, on live camera it was working. Let's see if it works now. So you can see, you can hear how it's very faint. And I can, I'm only running this on three volts. I can turn the voltage up and get more gain out of it. And if I take my little uh, audio oscillator, you can also use a, uh, an iPod or MP3 player or something. Anything that has a sound, that has audio output. And if you listen, you can hear. It modulates it. Very simple. That's all I do. So I'm connecting the negative lead of my signal generator or audio generator or MP3 player or whatever to the ground. I'm just tying it to ground. And the signal end, I'm tying through this little cap to this coil. Just give me a little bit of isolation. And this is just a, I think this is a 0.47 microfarad or 0.047, something like that. It doesn't really matter. And you have pretty much a directional signal generator. You can couple it up to your antenna. It's at, you know, it's kind of, you can change the, if you can adjust the voltage to your power supply, you can hear just by adjusting it. Just by adjusting the voltage, you can adjust how it works. Okay, so again, I'm around 3 volts, but you might have to experiment with that too. So, there's a little idea. Um, I could probably tune an IF coil with this on the cheap. But, even though it's not as good as a real signal generator, and I'm sure we could build some, a Hartley or a Colpitz oscillator that would be you know, more, you know, have sine wave and be more stable and everything. But this was a cheap and easy way to do it. It was a lot of fun and uh, for experimenting. And if you want to build it yourself, um, here's the here's the schematic. And uh, you can probably probably put this on pause and just copy it down. It's pretty simple. And uh, pins one and pin eight is your power supply for the chip. I put that in there. You could probably use a battery pack. You could use a little power supply, a little you know, tiny little bench top cheap power supply or something, whatever. Uh, again, you have to play around with the voltage if you're going to use my little uh, the idea for the little modulator coil. But uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, the other thing I noticed was uh, I just thought I'd go a little bit crazy here and I took my uh, just to see how how steep the uh, signal is as far as the you know f on this on the uh, what the output looks like I decided to connect it up to my spectrum analyzer so I have a spectrum analyzer lead here and I'm just going to take the positive of that run it into the coil like that and if we look over at our spectrum analyzer and this is just for entertainment purposes only of course um, right there and you can see right dead on 455 kilohertz I'm spanning uh, 100 kilohertz span at about sitting at about negative 52 DB so I have a nice little signal and you can see right there that uh, it's a pretty nice peak. Not bad. So, anyhow, I hope you uh, were at least entertained by this and maybe inspired to try this out yourself and kind of expand on it from there. 
and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Next coming up is uh, I just got in a new project. I got in a big uh, Pioneer SA7500 uh, integrated amplifier that's got some issues. Um, I'm going to be restoring that from the ground up and going through every last little setting and uh, I'll try to do a video of that and hopefully that'll be interesting. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you next time around. Have a great day.